Hello everybody, welcome back to the channel. I've had some requests to go over my whole home audio system and what components I have installed in my house and the details about that. So I'm gonna start by going to the Home Theater Direct website, which is what you're seeing here, and it's htd.com for hometheaterdirect.com. This is the beginning of their website. If you scroll down here to the bottom, kind of tells a little bit about them. All Home Theater Direct is sold directly to consumers. They avoid distributors, wholesalers, and retailers, so we get a pretty competitive price, and you're buying it directly from them. They do come with a 30-day risk-free guarantee. You can kind of trial it out before you are committed to anything. They have a, a free custom audio plan. You can upload your blueprints, and they will set it up how they think you want your system, depending upon which system you're looking at, and email it back to you. That is all free. Then they've got a lot of different options from speakers, you've got bookshelf stuff, you've got in walls. You might recognize these from my home theater. These are the Versa HTS-1 that I built into my walls and I'm using them for my bed layer speakers in my home theater. But I wanna to stick to my whole home system and there's multiple options here as well. So when I go to whole house audio, and this brings you to their whole home audio page. So you can see across the board here, right here, there's already multiple systems from your basic system all the way up to your advanced systems. Depends upon if you want keypads or not, or if you just wanna use your app on your phone. You, they have built-in Alexa ceiling mounts, so it can be flush mounted into your ceiling, so it's not on your countertop taking up space. And we do have one of those in our kitchen, and it is great. It works flawlessly. We'll get to that here in a second. I'll show you how that works. I have the advanced link system. You can go through here and you can kind of see all the different systems and what options they have depending upon what you want to accomplish, how many zones you want. For the most part, you have the six and 12 zones depending upon how many zones you need in your home. So if I click on the advanced link system, since that is the system that I have to this one, and I have the link six. I have six zones in my house, and those six different zones are divided up from the garage is a zone. I have a outside patio is a zone. The kitchen is a zone. The living room is a zone. The master bedroom is a zone. And then I have one zone left, and we have two bedrooms that share that zone. So I can't play separate music in the other two bedrooms but they will share a zone so that there's music in both of those bedrooms it's just the same source playing in both of those bedrooms you can't have multiple sources like you can in the other zones you can have a different source playing in every single zone if you wanted to and sources can be anything from music to a television to an Alexa. You can have one of these pads that I have, the, the Link Touch Pads. We have one of those in the kitchen area. It actually has a 3.5 millimeter input jack you could plug your phone into or any type of music player using a 3.5 millimeter jack. That can be a source. There's Bluetooth options to these Link Touch Pads. Lots of different options for sources of where the sound is coming from. It goes into to the receiver and then pushes it out to whatever zone that you want to listen to so whatever speakers you could have one source play in every single zone it's very customizable depending upon how or what you want to listen to and where you want to listen to it at so that's kind of my system here you can get a lot more information here on their website i don't want to dig into the full details on their website here. I'm just kind of showing you which system I have. I do not have the intercom option. You can intercom with your doorbell. That is a add-on system that I did not incorporate into mine because we have a video doorbell instead. So let's kind of start from the beginning and jump right into the install and what I had to do to get this whole system installed in my house. We knew we wanted to do this when the house was being built and my builder was kind enough to let me come in before the drywall and insulation stage so that I could pre-wire the house myself and run all the speaker wires and network cables and everything that I needed to do to go along with this system to make it work and also 
the, the network cables that aren't related to this system if I wanted Cat 6 RAN behind my TV so I could hardwire the TV in or hardwire a fire stick or whatever I wanted that I would have several different network cable connections behind the TV for future use. So we'll jump right into the install here and we'll take a look at what the process looked like to get all that installed. Here's a look at all the tools and materials that I needed for this project. This is what all the wiring looked like after I had all of it ran before my builder put drywall on this wall where my rack was going to be located. After deciding where I was going to mount the rack, I got it mounted to the wall. And this is a picture of what the back side of the wall looked like before any wiring was ran. And then once some of the wiring was ran with the network cable. I ran this smurf tube to two of the three TV locations for future proofing purposes. That way I can run my CAT6 network cable to the back of the TVs now and if I ever need to replace that cable in the future, I can simply pull it through this tube back to the main rack location. This is what it looked like for the living room TV, for the master bedroom TV, and then for the TV that's going to be in the garage. And you'll notice there's no tube for the network cable in the garage, and that is simply because if I need to replace those cables in the future, I can fish the wires up to the attic and then down to the TV from the attic. So I decided not to run Smurf tube to the garage TV. After drywall and painting was done, I installed the keystone jacks on the end of the network cables in the box and finished it off with a four port double gang box. This is a look at the end product in the master bedroom. All the way on the left is the source input that goes to the whole home audio so that I can use this master bedroom TV as a source for listening to the audio through any of the zones in the system. In the middle you can see that I have three runs of CAT6 cable running to this location and then on the right a power source for the TV and fire stick or whatever I'm running. Here's the same finished product in the living room but I have four total runs of CAT6 running to this location. I also had two runs of CAT6 network cable going to my two Ubiquiti Nano HD Wi-Fi access points, one being in the garage and one being on the main level by the master bedroom, as centrally located as I could. To finish up the network cable install, you'll see that I ran CAT6, which is the blue cable, and then there's also the white cable, which is a CAT5E. I decided to run that cable because it was a little more flexible, a little cheaper, and I ran those to my power over ethernet security camera locations in various spots throughout the house. This is the back side of the patch panel that I'm using for all the termination of all the network cables that come down to the main rack. With the patch panel installed, I simply made some short jumper cables to connect the patch panel to my 48 port power over ethernet ubiquity switch. Okay, let's install some speakers. I used these speaker brackets, which I purchased from Home Theater Direct, and installed them in the locations that I measured out and wanted the speakers to be. That way, when drywall comes, they can simply drywall right over the top of the bracket, zip it out, and it's ready for a speaker to be installed. After I had all my speaker brackets installed, I needed to run the speaker cable itself. I found the wall that I wanted to chase the speaker wire up to the attic and then out to all the speaker locations. I used a hole saw to gain access from the inside of the stud space to the basement to the main rack. Here is the top of that stud space location that goes into the attic after the hole was cut. This is the stud space after all the speaker wires were ran up from the basement into the attic. I secured the speaker cable as it went to each speaker location using little wire clips to hold them in place. And make sure you leave a good one to two feet of additional cable hanging down so that you have enough to drop the speaker down, connect it, and then install it up into the bracket location. Each zone can handle four speakers max. So you'll see the four speakers here in the living room and then the two speakers in the kitchen zone. 
If you have four speakers in a zone, you'll notice the front two in the living room here have two speaker cables hanging down through the speaker bracket, and that's because the one line goes to the amplifier, and then the other speaker cable goes to the secondary speaker on that same channel. So you have two left speakers and two right speakers in that zone. Here is the kitchen and living room after the drywall has been installed and what you're seeing here is all the holes for the flush mounted lights and the six speaker locations for the whole home audio. This is the in-ceiling 8-inch ceiling speaker from Home Theater Direct that I used in all of the locations except for the master bedroom. These are the speakers that are used in the master bedroom. They have a six and a half inch woofer instead of the eight inch and are mounted at an 18 degree angle so that you can aim the sound at a specific spot instead of them firing straight down toward the floor. We use these speakers in the master bedroom because the two speakers that we used are all the way on the outside walls and this way the speaker aims towards the middle of the room where the bed is centered behind the TV. These are the two outdoor speakers also from Home Theater Direct that we used for the outdoor balcony in that zone. Back at the rack, we installed the amplifier and the receiver or processor for the whole home audio system. Here you can see the receiver and the amplifier all connected together with multiple RCA cables and then all the speaker wires that come in to the amplifier itself that go out to all the speakers throughout all the zones. This is the gateway device that sits behind the system that connects to my ethernet and allows my phone app to control the whole system via Wi-Fi as long as I'm connected to my local network. Here's the wall behind the rack after some cable management was done. In the kitchen, you can see the four flush mount lights in this picture, the one of the two speakers for the kitchen zone, and then there's a smaller circle right here that is the Alexa dot flush mount kit. The kit from Home Theater Direct comes with a power over ethernet injector so you can power your ceiling mounted Alexa. And then it plugs into the receiver so that the volume output ends up coming out of the speakers in the zone that it's hooked up to. So if you ask her any type of question at all or to play music, it will not come out of the Alexa device's speaker, but it will come out of all of the speakers in the zone connected to that whole home audio system. So in my case, I have two speakers in my kitchen zone that the Alexa is hooked up to. This is great for setting timers when you're cooking, listening to music, or anything at all that you might use your Alexa device for. Alexa, play Top Pop. The station Pop Culture Radio on Amazon Music. Alexa, turn the volume to three. Alexa, turn the volume to eight. Alexa, next song. Alexa, stop the music. Alexa, what time is it? The time is 9.03 a.m. So we're going to go over how to control this system from the app on your phone. And this is really the primary use and control the zones and the sources are all from the app. Unless we're doing a little bit of Alexa stuff, which is limited to just the kitchen zone out of those two speakers that are in the kitchen. So typically you open up the app. If you're on your local Wi-Fi network, it's going to connect to your system. This is what you see. I've got the whole system set up. I haven't gone into the settings since I got it all set up. And then you'll see on the left my six zones and they're labeled from living room, kitchen, master bedroom, the boys' bedroom, the garage, and the patio. And then the next column is your source. And you can change those very easily by simply tapping on them. So if I turn the living room zone on by hitting the power button, you'll see the blue circle, power button, the living room, 
zone is on and it's listening to the living room TV at a volume of 35. If I want to change the volume, I tap on 35 and you can select whatever volume level you want. If I want to listen to music out of the living room, I can tap on living room TV. And now here's the list of sources that I have hooked up to my system. The touchpad is in the kitchen. If I had a 3.5 millimeter audio jack that we saw earlier, I could listen to what's ever on the master TV or the TV out in the garage. I have a Chromecast that is at the receiver at my rack position that I can cast music to from a streaming service like Spotify or Amazon Music. I also have a older Amazon Alexa at the rack position plugged with a 3.5 millimeter jack from the dot to the back of the receiver so I can simply tell any of my Alexa devices to play music on the basement dot. And if it does that, that can be used as a source in any of these zones as well. So you simply click on whatever source you want. Um, you'll see source 11 down there is MP3 player. You can use a USB stick, thumb drive, load it full of MP3 files, plug that into the receiver, and access those songs from any of these the zones. So we'll change it to the Chromecast, so you'll see that it just changed from living room TV to the Chromecast. So if I wanted to play music in the living room, it's powered on, and it's on the Chromecast at a volume of 35. Shortcuts at the very top, you'll see Amazon Music, Spotify, YouTube, Plex, I'm going to click on Spotify, and when that opens up, if I click on the cast, I can go to Chromecast. Now that it's connected to the Chromecast, if I hit play, it is now playing music in the living room out of the four speakers that are in the living room. And all I can do is change the volume, make it louder. Can turn it off. So that's kind of how you select a source and get it to play where you want it and control it using the Home Theater Direct app for this link system. You'll also see some menus across the very bottom. We have zones, which is where we're at. If I click on groups in the middle, I only have one group set up, and that is because these two zones are right next to each other, the living room and the kitchen. There's two speakers in the kitchen, there's four speakers in the living room. Grouped these zones together, and I called it the vaulted area. You can see at the top because it's the entire vaulted main level. And we group them together because now if I want to listen to the same source out of all six speakers, I set these up as a group. And then what you can do with that group is go over one more to presets. And I set these presets up. So if I wanted to listen to the very bottom one is vaulted music. If I apply that, so you see that it applied. If I go back to my zones, you'll now see that preset turned on the living room zone. It turned on the kitchen zone. It changed both of the sources to Chromecast at a volume of 40. So with one click, it set up both of those zones ready to play music. If I wanted to watch TV, living room TV music is the very top one. If I apply that preset and then go back to the zones, now it only turned on the living room zone, change the source to the TV at a volume of 25. So you can do some different things with your presets there. If you do get into your, your settings, obviously you can disconnect from the system at the very bottom. System settings, I haven't done anything with this, like I said, since I set this up. Shortcut settings, these are what you're seeing across the top of the screen. You have your preset settings, so this is where you can add and change various presets, so one button does multiple actions of things and get it right to where you want it to be. Group settings, this is where I added two zones into one group. I've got my source settings. So you can have lots of different sources. You can turn various ones off if you don't have anything connected to them to only show the sources that are active. So you don't have a huge list, especially if there's nothing connected to them. And then your zone settings. And this is where you can name the zone. If I go to the settings for the living room zone, this is where you can name it. And you can 
change or hide any of the sources in that specific zone. So without getting into it any further, it's very simple. You come into the app, you turn whatever zone on that you want to turn on, you change the source to whatever you're listening to, wherever the source is, and then you can change the volume. And it's that simple. When you're all done, you come in here, I hit all off, it turns all the zones off, and you're done. One final thing I wanted to show before I end this video is I mentioned running wires from the basement area up to the attic, and this is how I accomplished that. I ran two Smurf tubes from the basement area through a stud space by the garage wall up to the attic space, which allowed me to run wires in the future if I ever need to from my basement unfinished area up through those tubes into the attic and then out from there. So that is something that you might want to consider if you're in the same situation as I was when pre-wiring my house, is think of those future-proofing ideas that could come in handy. And that's all for this video. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe if you haven't already so you don't miss any further home theater related items that I still have in plan for my build. Please comment below if you have any questions about this system and I will try my best to answer them or point you in the right direction. Thanks for watching as always, and we'll see you in the next one.